All right. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mr. Wendt, and we are broadcasting live today from our Germantown campus. So I'm so happy to be here with you and worship with you this morning as we worship together in our chapel service. We will begin at the top of our sheet, our worship handout. We worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. The Lord is my strength and my song. And we pray. Dear God, we're so glad to be here today. We love you, and we like to praise and worship you. Bless our teachers and our pastors, and bless everyone who helps take care of this building. Help us listen carefully to your word, hear the prayers that we offer, and send the Holy Spirit to guide our praises. Help us to love one another as you love us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Normally for my devotion, I would like to have students come up here to the front and ask you some questions, get you some other people up in here, uh, up in front so that you can see somebody else besides just me and you can hear their responses. Today I can't do that, unfortunately, uh, but I can, I can give you the situations yet and I can have you think about what you would say and how you would respond in these situations. All right? So here's the first situation. Your teacher says, I can't believe that you aren't done with your homework. You had two days to do this assignment and you're still not done. This is ridiculous. Think about how you would respond to that. Now, maybe you had your work done and the teacher is falsely accusing you, which hopefully we don't do, right? Or maybe, probably more likely, you didn't have your homework done. How does that make you feel? How do you respond to that? Yeah, you probably don't feel very good, right? I know, I'm not going to call a lot of people today. I apologize. Uh, yeah, you're probably not going to feel very good. You might, you might uh, be a little upset at the teacher, maybe, for being upset at you, right? Sometimes in the upper graders, with the upper graders, with the eighth graders, I get that response a little bit, like, why are you upset at me? You know, I can get my homework done whenever I feel like it, Mr. Wang, right? Here's another situation. Your friend says... Where did you get those shoes? They don't look very cool. Now maybe you've had that happen to you where you wear something new to school that you like and one of your friends, someone who you get along with, someone that you normally like, says that to you or says something else to you that makes you feel a little bit bad about your fashion choice. How does that make you feel? How do you want to respond to that? Maybe you get a little upset at them, right? Maybe you kind of say in your mind, yeah, you know what, I don't really like you very much today, right? Yeah, that might be something. Here's a third situation. A classmate says, I can't believe that you would vote for that person. If he gets elected, he's going to ruin the country. And I hear a lot of those commercials on TV telling me that if I vote for this person, I'm going to ruin the country. If I vote for that person, I'm going to ruin the country, right? And sometimes, unfortunately, it carries its way down into the lower grades too, right? Uh, you see all the political things and your friends are after you for voting for this way or that way. And maybe it makes you feel a little upset. Maybe it makes you even angry at times because someone is coming after you for a choice that you can't even make because you can't even vote yet. Yeah. We might think that these situations don't hurt us. But even as an adult, I have to admit that they sometimes bother me too. If an eighth grader makes a comment about my shoes, it's going to hurt me a little bit. It's going to bother me a little bit, right? Well, what about, what about us and God? God comes to us and he tells us a lot more than that, right? He points out our sin through the law all the time. And sometimes that makes us feel bad. And sometimes we might even be angry at God for pointing out our sin and telling us that we do things that are wrong. God says in his word in Romans chapter 3, verse, 20, verse 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Right there, God points out 
that we are all sinners. So what do we do about that tension? What has God done about that tension, that struggle, those bad feelings that we have between him and that he has between, uh, between him and our sin? Well, that's where the stone of grace comes in. Remember, we're talking about how we are all living stones and we're built on the rock, right? God is that rock, that sure, solid foundation. Jesus is that stone of grace. God sent us a Savior to deal with all of our sins. And this is what he says in Romans chapter 3, verses 22 and 24. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. And in verse 24, he says, And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. So that tension between us and God, those bad feelings that we have because of our sin, and we know that we've sinned against God and we've sinned against other people, we can ask for forgiveness and believe in Jesus as our Savior. And when a teacher or a friend or a classmate comes to us and says something that bothers us, we can ask for forgiveness if we've done something wrong, right? And if they're being mean to us or doing something wrong, we can let them know that they are forgiven too, right? We can follow God's example for us and we can forgive others. So ladies and gentlemen, we have that weight of the law on us, but we also have that stone of grace, Jesus Christ who paid for all of our sins. We pray. Dear Father in heaven, Help us to remember how to deal with our sins against you and against others. Help us to confront that sin and ask you and others for forgiveness. Help us to remember that Jesus paid for all of our sins and that we are righteous by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will continue at the bottom of your worship folder. And we will say the Lord's Prayer together. We begin. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. And we say the final verse of our song since we're not allowed to sing this morning. We begin. As stone on living stone is set for worship on this ground, hold fast onto the cornerstone, the one foundation sound, held firm through generations with God's own power shored. In ages past, for years to come, our hope is in the Lord. Very nice. uh, It's so nice to come up and worship with you this morning. I love to see your faces, or at least as the pastor's been saying, from here on up I can see your faces. And I know you're smiling underneath your masks, and that is great. Uh, Once again, my name is Mr. Wendt, and uh, it's so nice to come up here from South Campus and worship with you this morning. Thank you so much for your participation. God's blessings on your day.